139.1 pounds. Good morning, you guys. So today I hit a new solid weigh-in. I'm 139.1 pounds. Um, I'd been stuck at like 140 pounds, and then um, I did take a diet break where I wasn't counting any macros. Now I'm back on the grind. So my highest weigh-in from the time I started this cut was 145 point something, but it was mostly water weight, and the water did drop pretty quickly that weight and now I'm at 139 and uh, when I began cutting again after the diet break I was 141 point something pounds so yeah now I'm 139 after um, doing a solid week of cutting and I uh, dropped my macro slightly um, today I'm at 144 carbs, I believe 40 fat, and then, what's my protein? I think it was 128 protein or something like that, or 127. Um, but yeah, so my macros have dropped slightly, and the game plan today is I want to hit some shoulders, and then I'm going to do 300 calories of cardio. So I've been implementing cardio. So, uh, right now, like, last week was hectic, so I missed, like, I think two workout days, and I had one cardio session, so this week I'm going to put in two cardio sessions and see, um, how my body reacts to that, uh, because I'm hoping that this year my body will drop on higher macros, but... That might not be the case uh, because I was hospitalized, lost a lot of muscle mass, and you know, usually it's the opposite way around. Usually, you gain more muscle over the years, and the cuts get easier and easier, but and you can cut on higher macros. I don't think that's gonna happen this year because I feel like my the amount of muscle I have on my body is about what I may have had when I was beginning to do weight training seriously a few years ago so yeah because I I don't know if you guys knew this but I've been lifting since I was like 16 years old um but the problem was never did it with proper nutrition didn't know about macros um the only thing I knew about was clean eating but I didn't really see a lot of huge results until semi recently like i think i started my fitness journey again a few years ago and i have a video on my transformation and i'll put the link below but that video when i put it out i didn't think like a ton of people would have saw it like when i started my channel i didn't think i'd even get a thousand subscribers and that video is at over a hundred thousand views now a little over a hundred thousand views and for me that's huge because it's nice to see that I'm inspiring you guys and you know this cut right here it's it's kind of a, it's very important to me because I want to show people that even if you have a disability I wouldn't this is considered a disability but I wouldn't consider it myself to you know think of myself as an incapable so um yeah, I want to show people that even with an ostomy or, you know, there's ways to work around it. Like, people have gone through so much adversity, losing limbs to who knows what, you know, fighting cancer. And they get back on the grind, get back on the horse, and they continue their fitness journey no matter what life throws at them. So, yeah. Sorry. Went on a rant, but I want to inspire you guys and help you all. So... Today, the game plan is we're going to do shoulders, we're going to do cardio, then I'm going to put a grocery list together. I'm going to get some food um, to do like a mini meal prep. And um, I've been enjoying doing these mini meal preps. Uh, so yeah, and I'm going to take you through the whole thing of how to even go about 
you know, setting up your own meal prep and how easy it is. All right, so I made the game plan, the grocery list. So this is what I'm going to go by. And I already pre-calculated, like, guesstimated macros of what the macros are going to be. But it's not till later that you know for sure what they're going to be. And I'll show you guys when it's time. But for now, we're going to head to the gym, get the workout on, then go straight to the grocery store. Just got to the gym, gonna get the shoulder workout in, then I'll see you guys back on the road. Cardio is done, no lie, like 15 minutes and I was like, maybe I'll just make this a 200 cardio session, but push through it, got 300 calories done. It was, um, like it's painful after 10 minutes for me if I haven't been doing cardio for a long time and I'm hungry and, ha and fasted, um, so but once I get through this plateau when doing cardio, it's around like past 15 minutes, I just accept it and it, gets, it just gets easy and I just do steady state cardio. So yeah, no sprinting or anything for me, just very slow and steady wins the race. Um, but I remember when I was a pro at this Air Master, I would do level 10 to 12 the whole time. Just get like 400 calories done in like 30 something minutes. but. Yeah, my cardio isn't where it used to be, so it's a little steady. Going to the grocery store now. Scan coupon now. So I just got home, took a shower, got ready, cleaned the kitchen up, so I'm going to do my fajita recipe right now. So first step to meal prepping is if you don't know a recipe by heart, look up like five recipes that are similar. So if you want to do chili, look up five recipes and try to look at the healthy versions and if there aren't any healthy versions go ahead and make tweaks to it. So instead of using like regular full fat ground beef, use like lower fat, leaner cuts of ground beef or turkey, um, ground turkey, stuff like that. So I did my research and I'm tweaking this fajita recipe to fit my needs. So yeah. All right, so we're gonna run through what we're gonna need for this recipe. Your two choices of bell peppers. So it could be red and green or whatever combination you like. We got red onion, 20 ounces of paste salsa, two fajita veggie packets. Um, unless you know how to make your own homemade seasoning, this is good. Two pounds of skirt steak, and then a crock pot. First things first, we're gonna cut this top part off. Then we're gonna go ahead and I like to cut out the middle part. We're just gonna work the knife around. And it does help if we make a little opening right here. There. Just be careful. See how we got that out? Nice and clean. So now we're going to cut off the bottom. So look at that. It's nice and open, nice and clean. And then I'm just gonna rinse out the seeds. All right, so now we only have the meat. So from here, I'm just gonna carefully make thin slices across. And this is pretty uh, self-explanatory. 
And if you don't like these slices long, we can cut them in half. And I, I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I don't like my bell peppers too long. And then we're just gonna do the same for all of this. As you can see, all the bell pepper is nice and cut. And I'm gonna turn on the scale. I weigh in grams, zero it out, and then I'm going to go ahead and weigh all this. And I'm gonna do this exact same process for the yellow bell peppers and the onions. I'm gonna weigh everything. So that right there is 209 grams of red bell peppers. So I recommend you, I write it down on a scratch piece of paper, 209 grams. And I'm gonna write down the weight of everything on here and then it just makes it so much easier to put it all in my fitness pal later. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start slicing this to my preferred sizes. So if you like large chunks, do it that way. If you like thin, do it that way, whatever you prefer. And by the way, you don't have to use this cut of steak. If you could use a fattier cut if you want, you could use chicken. You can basically just adjust this recipe for your needs. So I want to run through some things about cutting skirt steak since this is the one I am choosing. Uh, first of all, I like to wear gloves because meat is kind of dirty. Um, so I'm going to first trim the fat and other than that what I wanted to show you guys was the grain. Um, how the meat is, the fibers of the meat can see it runs this way so when you slice this you don't want to slice it with the, the grain of the meat like that you want to slice it this way or else you're gonna be chewing this meat forever it's gonna to be tough it's gonna to be hard to chew so yeah that's why I just want to explain before I get going on this that you grab slice like this and pull away as you slice. All right, the steak is nice and cut. Um, I didn't cut with the grain. I cut it the other way, not with the grain, but this way. And then, so this is one of them, but look at all the fat I got out of that steak. So that's a lot of weight that, um, is not in there, so now I'm gonna measure the first round of meat. Uh, we're gonna put it on ounces. I'm just gonna throw it in here. Remember to disinfect everything that the raw meat touches after you're done with this. Oops, dropped a little bit. So that's 12 and a half ounces of steak so far. And I'm gonna write it down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with fat trimming and everything with this one, and then I'm gonna weigh it. First thing we're going to add is the salsa. I got four ounces measured here. And then I'm going to add the rest of that jar that I have, which is 16 ounces. A total of 20 ounces. I'm just going to add it to the bottom. Just put some water in the glass, shake it up, um, and you don't waste any of it. Alrighty, so now here's the fun part. We're gonna add our meats. We're gonna add our bell peppers. I'm just gonna dump it all in here because we're gonna mix this. Our onion. Then we got both of our fajita seasoning. Okay, and here's a bonus because I love garlic. I'm gonna add some already pre minced garlic. Um, Korean and you just, I just have to. If you don't really like garlic, don't do this step. 
We have all our ingredients in here, so now I'm just gonna stir. There it is, ladies and gents. Um, all mixed up, we're gonna put the lid on. I'm going to put the lid on. And then I'm gonna set a timer, so. So here is the fun part. This is how I calculate my macros uh, for bulk creating meals. So I'm going to go to meals and then I'm going to click create a new meal. And I'm just going to name this fajita. Um, and then I'm just going to make it private. I keep mine private because they only really fit to me um, and they change all the time depending so I clicked add food. If you missed that right here, click add food. And then I'm just gonna start adding everything from that piece of paper. I'm gonna start adding everything I wrote down right here, plus the two packets of the fajita mix and all the paste salsa I put in. And that's gonna give me the total macros. Guys, I got everything added in here that I used, how many grams, everything, so I'm going to finalize it, click add food. And then, let's see, go back here, um, I said add food, let's save it. So now fajita is in here. Okay, so now, um, it's showing all, this is like the entire pot. These are the macros for the entire pot. 84 fat, 144 carb, 189 protein. Um, so obviously I'm not gonna eat this whole pot, but say I want to make four servings out of it. So um, I'm gonna put in 0.25 servings. That's a fourth of a serving. And then add it. So it's automatically adding in um, the macros to my dinner. Uh, let me delete one of these skirt steaks. Okay. So it automatically added one fourth of this pot. So one serving out of four servings into my dinner. So let's see what the macros are. If you split it into four. Um, so macros are if you split it the way I did it, it's 36 carb, 21 fat, 47 protein. So yeah, that's how I meal prep and that's how I figure out the macros quick without getting so confused. Later tonight, I'm gonna show you how I divide these servings up and I'm still unsure if I wanna divide them by four or five servings. All right, so I ended up speeding this up and doing the four hour option on high heat. It's been four hours, um, so Let's take a look. Wow, look at that steam. Well, that looks really good. Let's do a taste test. I'm gonna grab a little piece. I know, a typical Asian. Grab a piece of meat. Super tender and has good flavor to it. All right, so I'm going to unplug the crock pot and then um, I'm going to start prepping the meal prep containers. I'm going to let it cool down a bit before I start dividing it up. And I decided I am going to divide it up into five servings. Um, so, yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. And by the way, um, you could either be really OCD and take out all the meat, measure and weigh it, and take out all the fajita veggies and measure and weigh it, and then do the liquid. But um, if you average it out um, with the total macros, this is all going to me. So if you average it out through the days, because all it really comes down to is you hitting your weekly average macros. So as long as I hit my total number of macros throughout that one week, since it's all going to me, it doesn't really matter if each meal prep container is exactly 
blah 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 numbers. So that is my theory. And also you want this to be flexible. You know, it's like flexible dieting. And I already measured every gra gram, every ounce, every little thing that went in there. It is all going to me in the end, at the end of the day. So with over five days, it's still the same macros, if you get what I mean. It averages out the same. So that is what I'm gonna do to save time. And I'm just gonna eyeball everything. So as you guys can tell, I laid out five meal prep containers and I'm obviously just gonna put the fajitas in the big part of the container. And yeah, so I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I'm going to change the plan up a little bit. I'm just gonna weigh all these and see which one needs a little more than others because we have a little bit more left hard to tell. I'm just gonna do an overall weigh-in of things. So far I'm pretty much on point. That one's a little heavier. you guys I hope you guys like this meal prep idea and for the sake of thumbnails I put the tortillas in there but honestly I'm going to keep that slot empty because I like to be a bit flexible on my diet so by me putting like a staple rice beans or tortilla in there I'm kind of committing myself to have the macros for that portion be higher carb or whatever so what I'm gonna do is depending on my mood, if I want a tortilla, I'm gonna use um, these tortillas that I bought. These are lower calorie tortillas or lower carb and calorie tortillas. So, um, but on the days, like if I'm short carbs or something like that, I'll, you know, put in some jasmine rice or some black beans, you know, like you can be very flexible with this recipe. Um, that's what I love about it and the reason why I left a lot of the liquid in there is because if you store this in the fridge without a lot of that broth that meat broth that you cooked it in it's gonna get really dried out so you want to keep as much of the liquid with the meat as possible because this is gonna stay tasting good and tender and when you microwave it you don't want the meat just to be out without any liquid or broth so that's my reasoning for that and yeah I will be sharing the macros with y'all so I did do five portions and yeah very good meal prep I also saved the receipt so I'm gonna be calculating how much this meal prep costs how much it is per serving and the total cost and I'm gonna share that with you guys to to you know show that this can be budget friendly and the purpose that the reason for this video, this style of me showing you how I go about it from start to finish is so I can teach you guys basically how to fish instead of just giving you the, the catch. I want to teach you how to do it yourself so that you can save money and you know not everybody can afford you know paying for meal preps through a company who makes it for you. And yeah, it's really expensive and you're gonna pay for shipping and all that stuff and it's not as fresh unless it's like overnighted to you like the night that they cook it this way if you cook it at home you not only save money but you're saving time throughout the week if you have a job because all you really got to do is microwave and go and you don't have to worry about cleaning pots pans and all that stuff every night but yeah this way it's so much easier and if you have someone else you cook for spouse kids um, just double up the recipe or triple it up um, but yeah, that's how I do it, and it's it makes it so much simpler because you just cook one big batch of something. And also, I wanted to say, I used to do seven-day meal preps. Now I try to limit it to four to five days because the problem is, depending on the food, if it's not like in a stew or something like that, certain vegetables and stuff rot quicker than others. Like if you 
do some shredded lettuce, it's going to go bad and start turning pink within a few days. So stuff like that is better cut fresh. So maybe like the night before, cut it and put it in your meal prep. But you will learn as you go. But I'm just trying to teach you guys through my mistakes. And yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'm still going to continue this vlog. Because I'm still doing the full day of eating. I totally forgot. But because I know somebody's going to ask where I got these containers. I got them on Amazon. And I'll put the link to these containers in the description box below. So, yeah. Got these on Amazon. So I've been fasting forever now. Um, it's like almost 2 p.m. or it might be 2 p.m. But I got my lunch here. I got rice, eggs. There was rice here. I meal prepped it. But I put it in the bowl once it was done heating. Then I continued heating this curry I made. Japanese style curry. I'm going to have some of this. According to this, it's zero calories. So I'm going to have some of that. And then I'm going to have La Croix. Um, this thing is zero calories as well. This is the lime flavor. Um, yeah, so this is lunch. Next snack of the night. Um, super hot in here. I'm sweating. So I'm having this sugar-free popsicle. It's 15 calories and just all carbs. So yeah, I'm going to have this. Okay, next snack, I need to hit my proteins. And I read somewhere that having a scoop of protein or just some protein before a meal can help satiate you. So just having a scoop of this diametized vanilla protein tastes really good and it's pretty macro friendly. While I start drinking this, and I just put water in it, it's still good. I'm going to, if I can open this, I'm going to toast um, a few of these tortillas. Macros for two tortillas is one fat, 12 carb, one protein, so very macro friendly. This is like an Arizona white tortilla. So, yeah, I'm just going to toast it on this pan and then eat it with for, with my fajita, veggies, and steak. I'm just following the directions. So it says heat it until soft and warm. So I'm going to do that with do that with four total tortillas. Here is dinner. Very simple. Got the four tortillas. Got the fajita veggies. I'm going to basically make little tacos with them. And, of course, I'm not going to use all this liquid. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna like mix, have a mixture of the uh, meat and the veg. Love that there's like a ton of veg in here. I'm gonna do something like this. And the meat is tender. Um, just make sure you follow my tips on how to cut that skirt steak. So you got this, and then you basically have a little taco. You could also add additional veggies, you know, like uh, salsa, lettuce, and all that, but I don't want to get fancy today. Killed it. It's a little spicier than I like. Um, next time I'm going to use like mild salsa, but I was going over my macros. I already pre-inserted what I'm going to have for dessert. This is up next, and then, uh, I think that the macros, or at least I know that the macros are lower on the fajita mix. Because um, look at all this. All this liquid that I didn't eat. A lot of that seasoning powder is in that liquid. So I would consider that. So yeah. Next thing I'm going to do is we got to get this halo top. Um, it tastes better when you let it defrost a little bit, just get a little melty because the ice cream itself is very hard when it's been sitting in your freezer. And then I'm going to measure out 50 grams of blueberries and about 60 grams of strawberries. And when I'm cutting, and I'm serious about cutting, I weigh everything. It's just so much more accurate and you don't have to play guessing games and it guarantees that you're going to lose weight. 
the next week because you're going to know that it's your macros and that you need to lower them. But if you're not accurately tracking to begin with, it's going to be very hard to tell, like, is it you or is it the macros? But if you track every little thing that you can humanly control most of the week, then you're going to be better off. Grams. Okay, so the blueberries is what makes this amazing, okay? So when you eat this alone, I feel like it doesn't taste that great. It's just like, bleh, it's Halo Top, it's birthday cake, whatever. But for some reason, when you put this on top of some slightly defrosted, because they're frozen, um, <laughs> blueberries, it tastes like cheesecake. I don't know why. So I'm going to let this defrost for about five or more minutes. I just keep looking at them to see when they're not like fully frozen. And then I top it with this. It's an idea. I'm going to cut up these strawberries into smaller chunks because I realized that every time I have this dessert, I wish the strawberries were more bite-sized like the blueberries. So we're going to do that right now. All right, I feel like I made these strawberries look like more now, so it looks like more volume, so. Dump this. It's hard to do this with one hand. Dump you in there, mix you around. So I'm gonna defrost it a little more before I add that. Exactly 71 grams, which is one serving, so that's dessert. Taste test, even though I've already tasted this. I'm the one who invented this recipe, even though it's very simple. Mm. That blueberry just adds an extra kick to it, so. Alright you guys, so that concludes my video. I hope you enjoyed this full day of eating slash how to meal prep video. Um, comment down below what your favorite macro friendly desserts are and I'll see you on the next one.